My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. Other people make friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, teach. Call me, 1-800-743-CBC, or tweet me at Jim Kramer. People so often miss the forest through the trees, especially on days like today where the Dow inched up 44 points. That's to be advanced 0.12%. That's like decline 0.22%. The trees that get in the way are the individual bank stocks that just reported that we heard about all day. The ones that are graded on arcane line items like net interest margin, net charge offs. Then the cognoscenti rate them. J.P. Morgan versus Goldman Sachs yesterday. Wells Fargo today versus Sears. It's a parlor game played by big institutions. That means little regular people like you. Unless you're trying to rat out your portfolio with some bank stock that you think is poised to run. Oh, we can play that game, too. Wells Fargo was the star. Hey, that's maybe because, that's the, <laughs> because it was the worst, and now it's getting better. A lot of room for improvement there. Maybe it's Goldman Sachs. It had the biggest upside surprise. But what really matters aren't the individual stocks at all or their earnings. They're the trees. It's the forest itself or what the banks can tell us about the rest of the economy right now. They have such a great handle on it. They are nationwide and no more. I tell you, they know more than everyone, including the Fed. My takeaway, ah. America is incredibly rich right now. The pandemic has transformed us, transformed us from a nation of chronic overspenders, <laughs> taking down credit card debt well beyond our means. They know nothing. Into a nation of miserly but happy savers with the best consumer balance sheets, get this, in history. That's what happens when you get money from the government in a moment when there's nothing to spend it on except for Amazon Prime. I think we're at an inflection point where consumer spending can truly ramp up and ramp to a totally unexpected positive level, especially with millions of parents getting their child tax credits just this week. I mean, that's the forest, too. Now, some of the banks talked about how consumers are in such good shape that they're poised to borrow some money. Eh, I'm lukewarm on that whole thesis. But I do believe the forest includes continued home buying. However, that's now tied up with mortgage rates. Right now, they're incredibly low. But when you bet on housing, you'll end up dreading every slight uptick in rates. The house of pain. I think we can do better than that. House of pleasure. Which is why I want to focus on the things that Americans spend their money on when their coffers are this full. And again, they've never been this full. Let's start with what things people do when they got a lot of money. You know what they do? First, they travel. And that's especially true of younger people. Bank of America pointed out to me that there was an 8% increase in travel. What, versus last year when no one was going anywhere? No, versus 2019 when we were in boom times. Not 2020 when the pandemic tore us apart. The implications. It means the airlines can still be bought, including American and Delta, which will soon be profitable. International flights haven't even come back yet, so they got a ton of room to improve. I can't believe I'm recommending airlines, but you know what? I like the American Air at 12. Some might argue that these stocks have moved up too much, but I think there's actually plenty of runway. My favorite airline, Delta, surged to $52 when the vaccines became widely available in March. It's now at 40. Americans sunk from 26 to 20 over the same period. They're both too good to ignore. But my favorite way to play a flush and feisty consumer, don't leave home without, is American Express. I want you to think of it as a play on travel, on airline tickets, and perhaps most important, on dining out. Do not worry about business travel. You got dining out travel. Longer term, Amex is a pent-up demand play on going overseas. Even though the stock's only down a couple of points from its highs, you, got to, you have time to, to wait for a dip. Why? Because American Express doesn't report until Friday of next week. Now, what happens when people go out? Well, you probably want to look good, right? I mean, younger people love sites like Poshmark, the online marketplace for secondhand apparel and accessories. We had them on the show last week. The company's got great financials and a compelling growth story. There's even a green component because buying this stuff used to be uh, is, is, is what's much better for the environment. No landfill here. Poshmark's come down a great deal from 104 to 38. And it really jives with the consumer's newfound thriftiness. What else? Well, when the consumer has a terrific balance sheet, some exotics can take off, too. For example, when the average American was in way worse financial shape, boat sales were much bigger. Yeah. 
Even though we learned how much fun they can be last year, thanks to the need for COVID-safe outdoor vacations, powerboat sales still aren't back to where they were 20 years ago when we were in the middle of a dot-com-led recession. That's why I like Brunswick, B.C., with a complete line of boats from starters to killers. Although Brunswick's boats cost a lot of money and tend to be bought on credit, it's very easy for Americans to get credit right now. Stocks stalled out in May when Wall Street started worrying that interest rates would rise and choke off anything that depends on financing. That didn't happen, but the stock tumbled from 117 to 97. At this price, I think Brunswick should be bought. It's, it's only at 12 times earnings, but that's a sign that people think the earnings are going to collapse. I don't think so. How about more derivatives? People with good balance sheets want to splurge. I'm looking at Best Buy for big screen TVs. Many on Wall Street think this story is played out, but I don't buy it, especially after watching Black Widow at home this weekend. You know what? That was a good movie. The stock's come down from 128 to 110 in the last couple of months. It's got great management. People getting big screen TVs now are not early adopters. They need the geek squad. Count me in, especially with that 2.5% yield cushion and a great CEO, Corey Barry. Reverse chic, try Kramer fave Costco near its highs, but isn't it always? There's an amazing thing about Costco, pricing. They're not trying to make a fortune off you. When they, uh, look, when they sell you a bottle of Camus, my personal fave, with a tiny markup versus what they paid for it, well, what's Costco doing? They're trying to make it up in volume. They want satisfied members who pay their annual fees and buy in bulk. It fits right in. When younger people are flush, they buy furniture. They go to West Elm, belongs to Swim, Sonoma. When older people are flush, it's off to RH with a collection of astonishing fixtures and furniture. I defy you to go to one of their galleries and not buy something. I used to think that if I could keep my wife away from RH galleries, we could afford it. Turns out they have a website and they deliver and they even assemble. It's put a real dent in the family balance sheet. Finally, when you got money, well, you want to see what, what Apple's got for you, right? Can you get a new phone by switching carriers? Why not go to T-Mobile, which you know is a stock I like, or even a reseller? Or, or you could just go to the Apple store. And lately, we've been hearing that the stores aren't doing well. Well, that's, that's not true. Uh, that, that's like hearing that Apple's component suppliers aren't doing well. That's, that wasn't true either. There's always someone making this argument, even as the stock market is relentlessly higher. There are always people trying to get you to trade it. To trade it. When the stock was at 116 in March, they were hearing all sorts of stories about there were just supply, they were cutting orders to suppliers. Some people actually came on TV, said there were no catalysts. Apple stock closed at $149 today. Speaking of suppliers, when Apple does well, what else does well? How about Qualcomm? How about Broadcom? How about Skywork Solutions? Don't forget, when you buy an iPhone, you probably also sign up for a bunch of subscription services, giving Apple years of service revenue. Do you know what? I think they may actually grant my wish and break out the lifetime value of the average customer this quarter. Hey, they did it to service revenue. Bottom line. When it comes to bank earnings season, don't get too hung up on the individual trees. Wells Fargo, which is my favorite, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan. Instead, focus on the forest, what they're telling you about the state of the consumer. Americans are in fabulous financial shape right now, which means we're going to spend a lot of money when we climb out of our COVID foxholes. So prepare your portfolio accordingly. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.